Okay. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians 5, or, oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and while you're turning there, I want to give you a, just another brief testimony of camp. Uh, camp was a real blessing. I know for me, I look forward to it every year, um, and I am on that I would be allowed to be a counselor at camp. It's definitely something I don't take for granted, some things I definitely, I definitely am nervous about, about being a counselor, you know, what kids will I have, or, you know, how will I, how will, how will I be able to witness them and, and whatnot, um, but if I had to give you the entire, one of the, basically the main driving points of camp, and to condense it down into one sermon, the title of the sermon would be The Importance of the Gospel. Let's read. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. In Luke 24, 46, it tells us, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. That word behooved could be, uh, it's necessary. One of the definitions for the word behooved is that, is that it was necessary as law and commandment. It was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It was necessary for Christ to die for us, but he did not die for his own sin. He died for ours according to the scriptures. Um, but Christ should not only suffer, he, he had to die. And an interesting thought, I've heard pastors say this before, is that others were born to live, but Christ was born to die. The entire purpose of Christ coming to this earth was to live and die for our sins on Calvary and that he was buried. It actually tells us later on in the chapter that in verse number 13, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And verse number 14, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. It's necessary for Christ to have risen from the dead because many have died before, but only one rose again. And that was Christ. And according to the scriptures, Christ rose again the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 13. And then notice in uh, 1 Corinthians 5 through 6, we know he's risen because he was actually seen of many. In 1 Corinthians 5, he was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. And in verse 6, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, this is at the time, but some are fallen asleep. Now, I would like you to notice in Romans 10, 9, real quick, let me get there, sorry. I don't have all the verses written out. Romans 10, 9, this is part of what we call the Romans road. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. A lot of people overcomplicate the gospel, and the gospel is as simple as that. It's as simple as those two verses I told you, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. And it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There are two points to this sermon. The first one is the importance of the gospel to the unsaved. That is the importance of the gospel to the unsaved. Notice in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, and to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So what's key here, there, this, is actually, this, this verse can actually be broken up into the two points of the sermon. I'm going to read the second part again. For it is the power of God unto salvation. That is the importance of the gospel to the unsaved. And is that, is, that is that it is the power of the gospel. The power of God unto salvation. Sorry, forgive me. Um, and I would like to kind of segue into the second part of the sermon, and that is the importance of the gospel to the saved. I'm going to read the first part of the verse again. Romans 1.16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. This power that we have comes from the authority of God, but the power that we have comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what witnesses to us and tells us as Christians, as believers, that we have to witness to the unshamed, uh, unsaved. If nothing else, I stand before you only as evidence of the power of this gospel. 
if you take nothing else from my life, nothing else from my testimony, and I'm not a water walker, I am not a holier than thou kind of guy, I am barely older than some of you teens, but if nothing else, at least I can say that I am evidence of the power of the gospel of Christ. Um, and I want to read to you another verse, 1 Corinthians 15.10. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15.10. But by the grace of God, this is Paul, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. A lot of us, and, and, and a lot of times in my Christian life, I, was, I, I still am to this day. I'm still worried about what I can do, my abilities, what I can do for Christ. But a lot of, a lot of us get confused it's not actually about what we can do. It is about the grace that is in us. It is about what God can do through us. And the second point of this sermon was, what is the importance of the gospel to the believer? I want you to notice, uh, you don't have to turn there, but you can if you'd like to. 2 Timothy 3.14, one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. This is Paul talking to Timothy. And in a lot of ways, Paul was sort of a spiritual father figure to Timothy. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and then hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. The of whom that one can assume uh, and, or infer that that was actually Timothy's mother that Paul was talking about. Because the next verse it tells us, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Um, women in the church are very important. My mother is very important. I, I, I actually credit my mother with... Uh, a lot of the commitments I have made, especially a couple weeks ago, my mom challenged me to spend 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night with the Lord because I was dealing with a lot. I was dealing with uh, restlessness at my employment, and so my mother challenged me, and I thank you, Mom, for that. Um, and my attendance was not perfect by any means, but as I began to pray, the Lord began to change me and deal with me in certain ways. And it's, it's a beautiful thing and a magnificent feeling, one that I, I can't explain to you but one that I can know without a doubt is the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's, it's amazing. Um, and to go back and read first, or 2 Timothy 3.10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. This is Paul telling Timothy what he has gone through. Persecutions, affliction, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ, Jesus, shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is Paul telling Timothy, Timothy, despite everything that I've been through, despite all the afflictions I have endured, Christ, God, the Lord, delivered me out of them all. He's telling Timothy, encouraging him, Timothy, you're going to go through these things as well, but continue thou. And if, if you don't get anything else out of this sermon, young people, I'm barely older than you. And once again, I'm still learning this along next to you, but continue thou. You're going to suffer persecution. People are going to forsake your friendship but continue thou. Um, as believers, it is our job to share the gospel with the unsaved. It is. It's our job. It's our responsibility. A lot of young people, a few young people, made the decision to um, follow the Lord at camp, that they wanted to come to church, continue to come to church, and grow a relationship with the Lord. And a wise man once told me, as I said in the beginning service, that that is as important of a decision as getting saved. Um, notice Romans 4, 10, 14. You don't have to turn there. How then shall I call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? As believers, it's our job to witness to the unsaved. I feel like um, that was also another driving point of camp is the importance of the gospel in the life of a believer. A lot of times when we come down from the mountain, our commitments only last a few days or a few weeks. But it's important, it's important to continue thou. And I'm learning that as well. And I don't have a lot of experience like Pastor Rose or Brother Seth, but I can say in the short time that I can say this is true because I've seen it happen in my own life. Um, and that is the best way I can describe it. That was the two points of the sermon, is the, and the importance of the gospel and the unsaved and the importance of the gospel to the saved. And it's also important that we continue to come to church, forsake not the assembling of ourselves, but to continue to encourage each other in the Lord. And let's, uh, I, think, I think we should pray real quick. Let's bow our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, I thank you for a wonderful week at camp, God. Lord, the fact that you would use some of us to lead some of these children to you, Lord, 
is just is remarkable because we play such a little part in it, Lord. But it was amazing. It was such a blessing, God. And I pray that we would have many more camps like it, Lord God. And I pray for each of these one young people that God saved and that made decisions to continue to follow the Lord God. Do not, Lord, do not take your hand from them, Lord God. Continue to witness to them. Be with them, Lord Jesus. And I pray that you would allow us to encourage one another in you, Lord God. And I pray that you would bless us as we go about this way, Lord. And I pray that you would... Help us to keep our commitments, Lord, but most importantly, help us to draw nigh to you as you draw nigh to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Preaching, yeah. All you saw was the front. I saw his.